Hey everyone, welcome back to the makeup chair. Today I'm going to share with you guys five hacks for very pale skin. I am like the moon. I am so pale. So the reason this video came about is because I mentioned that I bleach my skin and I had so many people asking me, why do you bleach your skin when you're already so pale? So I technically don't bleach my skin, but I do bleach the hair on my body and my face. And the hair has gotten so fine and so kind of baby-like. So I just find it's much easier than waxing and all of that kind of stuff. And actually this is a little hack for anybody who applies fake tan all the time. I always keep this handy just in case I make any mistakes because not only does this just lighten the hair, but it also breaks down any fake tan on the skin. So if you've made a little bit of an oopsie and you've ended up with fake tan all over your palms or certain areas where it's like really dark, just apply a little bit of this and it will literally just take it off. And it's a very mild formula. It doesn't irritate my skin, obviously follow the instructions and make sure it's suitable for you. But I always have one handy just in case I make a mistake. Anyway, that's from a whole separate hack video. I'm gonna start off with the makeup for pale skin. So the very first thing that you need to know about pale skin is that usually it looks a little dull and it can look very flat. So the main thing is to apply lots of moisturizer on any skin that happens to be exposed. And another way that you can add a little bit more life is to mix in a highlighter with either your primer or your moisturizer. You just have to make sure you're choosing the right color though, because that's a little tricky part as well. I'll link some of my favorites in the description box, but the one that I use today is a drugstore one. I think it's only like three euro and a little goes a long way. And I just find it gives you a lot more confidence to go fake tan free, which is pretty hard, especially in Ireland, because we love our fake tans. But I find that a lot of moisture and a lot of highlighter just gives you that healthy glow that you can kind of skip it a lot of the time. And my next thing is to use correctors. This will give your foundation a helping hand and stop your skin from looking too gray, because a lot of those tones will kind of break through the foundation. And because the foundation is so light, it ends up looking really gray. And if you haven't seen it already, I'll link up here and in the description box my video about how to use correctors correctly and then you can go ahead and apply your foundation now picking a foundation from the drugstore is pretty difficult though it is getting a little bit better we're seeing a lot darker and lighter tones even though they still need to do a lot of work for instance I'm really loving this this is the photo finish by wet n wild and it has a light warm and a light cool and a light neutral in the range, which I really like. The only thing is it's not quite light enough. It's just a little bit too dark for my very pale skin. So what I have to do is mix it in with a white foundation. Try going for a white high-end foundation and mixing it with your drugstore foundation. And that brings me on to another thing is that you wanna make sure that you're mixing up enough foundation to begin with because you'll never get exactly that same color or even just keep a little container full so you don't have to do it every single morning. And a little bit goes a long way and in the long run, it will save you money because you can use your light foundation from the drugstore, mix it in with the white to get that perfect color for you. Now my next hack is about brushes. And it's about cleaning your brushes every time you use them. This is really important anyway, but particularly for people with pale skin, because if you applied your foundation with one brush and then you left it out all day and went to apply your foundation with it again the next day, the makeup that's been sitting on here is not only unhygienic, but also it has oxidized. So what it's gonna do is mix with your foundation and slightly darken it. So if you find that your foundation kind of looks a little darker by the end of the week, even though it might be the same color, it could be that your foundation brush is not clean, so make sure you're cleaning them. Once you've applied your foundation and then go in and set it, it's hard to find a really light powder, but Blancham's Cosmetics have you covered. They have their awesome palette, which has a white. Now you guys can see it's the most used one because <laughs> I'm so pale. So I always try to fix this in with my L'Oreal True Match Mineral Powder, which I'm obsessed with, but it is just too dark when I'm so pale. And then we do end up with quite a matte finish, but the great thing about that L'Oreal True Match and this powder is that gradually that natural glow that the skin has eventually comes through. So from the start of the day to the end of the day, my skin actually is gonna look glowier and healthier, which is what you want when you have very pale, matte, dry skin. It is then time to move on to contouring and highlighting, and this can be a little tricky when you are so pale. So let's start off with contouring. So what I typically do with the contour is I use a purple toned eyeshadow. Yes, I know. That's because they discontinued the NYX Taupe Blush, which was one of my absolute favorites. Why they discontinued it? I do not know. But I use a purple toned blush and I apply this where I want my contour to be. And then I use a cool toned bronzer to go over it because what you don't want to do is end up with a very purple kind of shadow. It can look a little bit bruisey. You also don't want to use any purple tones around the hairline. So I typically go a little bit warmer just around the hairline as you guys can tell. So here we have that nice shadow effect but around the hairline, it's more of a slightly darker shade of my skin because I don't want to apply purple tones or very cool tones 
around my hairline. It can look very bruisey and unnatural. Now blush is your best friend as well, so don't forget to apply blush. I typically go for pretty much anything. When it comes to highlighter, we have a few little problems here too. Mary Luminizer is one of my favorite highlighters, but it's actually darker than my skin, so I can't use it unfortunately, but Makeup Revolution has the solution. Ooh, that should be their slogan. And it has these beautiful tones for contouring, but it has this gorgeous white highlighter. Now what I really like about this particular white highlighter, it's baked with a gold shimmer running through it. So you don't end up with a very silvery blue tone, which I just find is very unflattering. And it's also not very chalky either because some of them can feel a little bit chalky depending on how light they are. Whereas this is a baked one and it just adds a beautiful shine to the skin and my skin just looks really healthy and glowy without looking too heavily highlighted. And the final hack in this whole routine is to use a setting spray. Now this is really important because we want to add that life back to our skin. As I keep saying, pale skin is dull skin and flat looking. This is a milky hydration spray and it just gives the skin a beautiful healthy glow, really plumps it up and just gives you that perfect finish. One of my absolute favorites when I'm super pale. Also, it pretty much matches my skin, so. So those are my favorite hacks for pale skin. Definitely let me know if you have any and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.